Good morning. Beautiful day. Um, what a day. Well, we're, uh, we're really excited to be here. It's great to see a fest like this come to the Northeast. You know, we've all been going many other places to, to do this kind of activity. So it's, it's great to see the community grow here. I'm Tara Feinberg. I'm the CMO and Managing Director of Kite. We're the first innovation uh, partnership platform, which means that we're helping big corporations to solve their most important business problems with startup and, and innovation partnerships, uh, which is why I'm sitting here with Jamie from Pepsi. Why don't you give a quick introduction? Hi, I'm Jamie. Thank you very much. Big woohoos. I accept them gladly. Uh, Jamie Fabrican, I'm with PepsiCo. I sit within a, a group at PepsiCo called the Creator Team. And we look to identify what's just starting to emerge, what's becoming new, and how we can experiment with it in never been done before ways. So uh, a really great group that goes across all of our beverages portfolio. Thanks for having me. Great. Thanks for being here, Jamie. And uh, I, it's, it's no surprise that we have Pepsi on stage here. Pepsi has been driving innovation and, and doing things in new ways pretty much since they were born. Um, and, uh, and we've seen them you know, create programs like PepsiCo 10 back in the day and, and, and other ways of, of bringing innovation into their business. You know, uh, innovation historically has largely meant product innovation. Yeah. Um, but we're, we're seeing it more and more refer to emerging technology and to uh, bringing commercial relationships or investment relationships into the business. We're seeing uh, uh, technology relationships move more from the CTO over to the CMO and into the marketing stack. And brands have to aggressively uh, attack this and, and, and really figure out how they, how they bring outside innovation into the business. So you have a long history as a, as a marketer, yeah. as a product innovator. How has the definition of innovation changed for you over time? Yeah, I think years ago when you said you were innovation, people assume you're in product innovation and you're looking to bring out, you know, what your launch is going to be for next year, what your product is, it has to go onto shelf, where um, now innovation is so broad, it could talk about product, packaging, um, but what I'm focused on more is program innovation and we're looking not just at um, our products and what we say is we're looking beyond the bottle. It's not just about only selling more of these, which it definitely is about, but it's also about how do we bring out new experiences? How do we bring out new content that our consumers love? Um, if anybody's seen some of the, the great virtual reality work that Mountain Dew has done, that's innovation. That, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're drinking the product. It means that you're enjoying the brand in new and different ways. And I think that's how innovation's really been changing for us over the past few years. That's great. And, and it seems like there's an innovation partnership mandate or imperative emerging right. within, within marketing, but within enterprise in general, across corporations. Um, you know, why is a big multinational corporation like Pepsi, which makes most of its money still by selling products, selling physical products, why is it so important to start engaging with startups? I mean, working with startups is hard. It's not easy. <laughs> it's not so, easy. So why is that important? Them, why yeah. is that something you have to do? Yeah, I mean, not everything's going to come from within our four walls. Like, we have an amazing research and development team. We have an amazing culinary team. The, our teams are brilliant, but we have to be honest with ourselves is we're not the end-all, be-all, and not every big idea is going to come from within the four walls of our building. So it is so important to be in touch with what the makers and the entrepreneurs and the startups and everything like that are bringing out into the world and how we can partner with them and not just rely on our big agencies, who also are amazing, but also how do we work with the small companies if we want to do something that's never been done before. Yeah, and you start to build new capabilities and, and functions as well. Absolutely. So, so how do you, as a large multinational global corporation, how do you match your massive scale with the nimble, often very small scale of, of startups who might not have a lawyer to review your contract or, or you know, people that work in the way that you, you're used to working with your agencies? How yeah, it's that? part of the culture. Our company and our all the way up to our senior management team really allows for it. And they allow for failure. And I think that's something that's really rare, where you have that permission to try something in a smaller scale and learn from it and fail a little bit. And some parts of it will work, some parts of it won't work, and that that's OK. And that you'll learn from that. And then you can scale it out from there. So I think that adjusting your style and adjusting your culture so that 
you're not only mandating how to work through an agency or you're not only um, assuming that everything's going to go flawlessly um, and really just working in collaboration um, or even, you know, I think sometimes having a big name like PepsiCo is amazing, but also, you know, sometimes if you uh, approach a small startup and say I'm PepsiCo, that could be overwhelming. So I'm also, you know, having to balance the positives and then also, you know, get to know us as people and you want know, to understand that you want to work with us um, and that it's not only kind of big corporate America. That's a really important point, you know. Uh, Walking into the room with a lot of swagger as a big corporation isn't necessarily what's going to win the hearts of the <laughs> best, brightest, most groundbreaking startup. You know, they they want to solve the problem that they are, you know, obsessed with. And yeah. and uh, and and how do you uh, change your culture to, to yeah. bring that in? I think one of the brilliant ways that Pepsi is doing that is is through Creator. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about this group that you've you've founded and and how it's uh, how it's approaching that those relationships? Yeah, this group is probably about maybe two years old. It's called the Creator Team, and we're looking to identify things that are just starting to emerge, some things that have never been done before, things that might be in global areas or might have happened one time, and how can we inspire and learn about that and understand who are these, what we call creators of interest, who we want to work with. Um, and then in experiment with those people and work with them and bring things into the marketplace in never been done before ways. So um, I think we have a video, if it's gonna work, we can try to show a little bit of that to see if that helps bring the creator team to life a little bit. Our world is changing right before our eyes. The speed at which culture is transforming is unprecedented. Identifying and experimenting with emerging culture is critical to understanding what will become mainstream in the near future and is critical to becoming a relevant marketer now. Welcome to Creator, a catalyst group within PepsiCo on a mission to consciously crack through the surface of pop culture. It will tap into emerging young creators, influencers, trends, and movements to inform and awaken our cultural consciousness today so that PepsiCo will become one of the world's most innovative companies shaping the culture of tomorrow. This is what Creator is all about. Active participation and immersion in an exciting world that's moving at the... Okay, oh, cool. You got a taste. Yeah, that's a good overview. <laughs> um, great. <laughs> Thank you. Well, so, you know, really, really powerful way to, to start working with startups, you know, and, and um, I know you're just getting started. It's, it's about figuring it out, you know, in collaboration with them, uh, which, is, which is a really, which is the right spirit to approach this, this entrepreneurial yeah. environment with, um, especially as you're bringing in artists and, and you know, startups yeah. and founders and, and a range of different types of people. Uh, just talk to us very quickly about about sort of the structure of, of Creator and and the different uh, groups areas. within within that are helping to act, action this. Yeah, we have three different areas within the Creator team. So one is what we call Creator DNA, which is what I lead. That's about helping to identify who we should work with, what are some things that are just starting to emerge, whether that's in technology or in other lifestyle and cultural verticals uh, that matter to our brand lifestyles. And then, um, then the second area, so once I've identified it, it then moves over to the second team called Creator Lab. And that's where they look to experiment, whether that's in a big bet or a quick hit, depending upon how big or small a scale we're trying to learn something at. So they'll partner with our brand teams, with our music team, with our sports team, and experiment in the marketplace to really drive innovation. And then the third area, which is a new area within our team, is called Creator Rev. And that's really about how we could potentially monetize new things and have it not necessarily be only about um, the bottle. So going beyond the bottle with monetization opportunities in the future. That's great. It's, uh, 
it, it's it's really nice to see that that planned trajectory to move it more towards accountability and, and towards action. We're seeing a whole spectrum of, of ways that corporations are approaching this. You know, I mean, um, Andreessen Horowitz is now giving over 2,000 tours of Silicon Valley a year. They have they have a team of somewhere I don't know almost 200 people that are just giving tours to corporates coming out to the valley every day. Uh, it's pretty amazing. You know, you see things like the Disney Accelerator, which led to the BB-8, the new robot in the Star Wars movie out of their first class. You know, things like Creator, the Unilever Foundry, which is sort of an ongoing way to, to bring briefs into different business units and brands all the time. Whole, whole different way, and, and I think you have to figure out what, what matches the DNA of, of your corporation. Uh, yeah, it's a dream us. job. I mean, it's, a, yeah. it's, it's fun. It definitely is. You know, you're still Absolutely. figuring it out, and you're able to kind of work across all of the beverages. You're able to play a little bit, fail, experiment, learn new things, meet great people. It's, it's Yeah, well, it's a fun. beautiful thing that, that Pepsi has created a culture internally where you can be an entrepreneur with entrepreneurs. Uh, so talk to us about a couple of the, the success stories. What, what's worked so far? Yeah, one of the most fun ones I've been involved in recently, um, we were working with Tiltbrush by Google, if, if you know of that um, virtual augmented reality platform. Before they launched publicly, which they just did a couple months ago, we partnered with, with them and brought it up to the NBA All-Star Game up in Toronto. So we brought together areas of sports, art, and technology and brought that in front of our athletes and to the media and to consumers and allowed them to actually physically like draw in virtual reality space. And it's just such a neat feeling where I've done VR a few times now and it's still starting to emerge and get experimented with and getting more mainstream. Um, but putting that headset on and actually being able to hold those like HTC Vive um, handheld devices and feel like you're in a third space and actually do something of like drawing in this space and stepping over art that's not really there. It was just so fun and hearing the reactions from athletes and the media um, was a really great way to showcase how we were driving innovation with Mountain Dew embedded within basketball. It's, it's amazing and and what you're doing at Creator is really helping to uh, inspire and, and, and bring to Pepsi the art of the possible through, through things like this. Um, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, tell us about some of the challenges you found, or, or if you have something that you can speak about publicly, something that just failed and didn't work. Yeah, I think everything to an extent is like successful and a failure at the same time. There's like definitely pieces out of it that you're like, oh my God, this is shutting down right now. I have two minutes notice. There's somebody from media coming and you just have to solve on the spot and wing it and think it's okay. And explain to you, it also adds to some of the marquee to it of like, sorry, this isn't even launched yet. This is something that's still in prototype and we're bringing it first to market. So... You just have to understand that these type of hiccups are going to happen. And um, in some ways, it, it makes it a little bit more special. There was even some media that I was like, can't do it now, have to come back tomorrow, <laughs> which is never ideal. But it also makes them want to come back tomorrow, which is kind of fun. And it, and it seems like consumers are more forgiving if you're transparent about that. You're saying, hey, we're going to try something new. We're going to co-create with you. We're going to co-develop with you. Uh, we're letting you come on this ride with us, come on this journey with us. And, and as long as you're transparent yeah. and, again, don't walk in with that swagger, hey, we're of a corporation, we have everything figured out, consumers pretty seem pretty open to it. We've all been there. We've all done that. There's always parts that work and parts that need to be adjusted. And as long as you're open with your communication, I think it's, it's been good. Absolutely. And then you just know what to adjust and fix and tweak when you go at it the next time. So how do you find what we like to call the Goldilocks moment? You know, not too big, not too small. There's, there's probably something that's just right for Pepsi. And it might, and it might vary based on brand or, or based on platform. But, but uh, how, do you, how do you find that? What, what, yeah, what's I your think, criteria? I know Pepsi is the name on the door. But I think one of the things that I love is, you know, we have Pepsi, which is very embedded within music and sports. We have Mountain Dew, which is a little bit more of like sneaker and urban uh, culture. We have Aquafina, which is more about like purity and the happy body dance. Um, within the broader organization, we even had you know, Gatorade and Tropicana, and there's just so many different brands that have different equities, which is 
part of what I love. So if I'm talking to a startup and they have something, it might be really appropriate to the DNA of one brand, but not really aligned with another brand. But having that whole portfolio to be able to, to have you know, purview into allows for a lot more options. So how do you how do you share those learnings and and adapt between such a diverse organization? Yeah, the learnings is interesting because it's not as clear as like you know like marketing mix modeling and what is your ROI and like the types of like definitions that corporate America is used to. So it's really about you know how have we done something that's never been done before? Is this scalable? Like setting the criteria in different ways and sharing those learnings back to the organization. So you're saying exactly what you were just asking of, you know, what part worked, what part didn't, what are we gonna change when we do this in a bigger way next time? Um, and then how do we sell it into our customers? So after seeing Tilt Brush by Google um, up at the NBA All-Star Game, the Verizon Center in Washington, D.C. came to me and was like, how do I get this in my stadium? So it's exciting when we start then being able to partner with our brands and our customers because they're seeing how we're innovating and wanting to then bring in that Goldilocks, like, just perfect moment for us. Right. Absolutely. Um, so... Why would a startup, uh, there, there are startups here, there are entrepreneurs here, there, it's a pretty diverse audience. Uh, why would a startup want to work with Pepsi what, uh, or, or big brands in general? But, but you know, what, what, are, what are you offering them that, that they're looking for in a relationship with a corporation yeah. like you? Yeah, I think you have to have the right relationship where you're adding value to them and they're adding value to you. So it's, you know, if you're looking for awareness and, you know, how to more, get more exposure and for more people to see your product, huge awareness that we can build, whether we're putting something on our YouTube channel or whether we're bringing something to Super Bowl or to the NBA All-Star Game or a Live Nation concert. There's a lot of great like awareness and exposure that we can provide. Um, and we also just have the right culture, I think, where uh, we understand entrepreneurs and we work with entrepreneurs and startups and don't have that mindset of um, only being able to um, expect perfection and hand everything off and think that you're going to handle all of it. It's really about co-creation and collaboration and how it becomes mutually beneficial for all of us. So I look forward to hearing from many of you, I hope. And uh, yeah, reach out to Creator. Excellent. Very good. Um, so we'll, we'll start wrapping up in a minute. But before we do, uh, how do you think corporations can start acting more like startups. I mean, you're, you're doing a great job at Creator. How does that spread across an enterprise? How do you, how do you embrace that, that culture of speed and flexibility and experimentation? Yeah, the organization is, is dying for it. Like, how do we can say over and over again, like, you have permission to fail, but nobody wants to do it. <laughs> and we've even, like, given awards for failure at our company of saying, you know, like, you've tried something, it's pushed the limit, it wasn't perfect, and good for you, here's a, an award for it, and you get recognized for trying things that are pushing the envelope. I was at a speaking event uh, last week with our president of Global Beverages, and I think, hilarious, he actually said, you know what, if you get fired for your job, do you really think you're never gonna find a new one? Like, take some risks, you're not gonna get fired, nothing's gonna go bad for you, like, push the envelope, that's what's gonna change you as a marketer. And it was so refreshing to hear that perspective from somebody so senior within the organization. So our company really, really wants us to like push the envelope, take those risks, work with entrepreneurs, not just rely on everything from, you know, brief your agency and the agency comes back to you with the idea, but, you know, bring in those ideas from everywhere. And I think that's what's going to continue to allow us to innovate and, and lead that's that's great. Incentivize failure. I, I love that. I you know within <laughs> within certain bounds. I mean, yeah. makes a ton of sense. So, how do you see Creator and and the space evolving in the next one year, three years? You know, what what does the future look like as you as you push this and it becomes more of a regular practice to to embrace creativity, to embrace entrepreneurship within a large corporation. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing right now that we have this team that's solely focused on this and that we work so collaboratively with the brand teams. But as bad as it is to say, like, I hope in the future our team isn't even needed. And this is just part of the culture and this is what the brand teams do on their own. And this is who our customer marketers just do. And everyone's working with entrepreneurs and I hope we're leading it right now and that we have the, the time to invest in it at the beginning. But 
I actually hope in the future, like there is no creator team and this is just part of what PepsiCo does and what every marketer is doing. I love that. I love that. That's great. Uh, yeah, the whole, all of Pepsi should, should become the culture of, of creator. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much, Jamie. Hope that was informative to you. Look up PepsiCo Creator. You can, you can find Jamie Fabricant on LinkedIn. Uh, look up Kite, getkite.co. And, and we'd love to, to help you on both sides of, of this equation. Yeah, I think we're Thanks on everybody. Twitter of at Pep Culturati. So oh, nice. find us there. there. Enjoy this beautiful day. And thanks for having me. Excellent. Thanks, everybody.